I'm someone who could sleep just about anywhere, and I guess tonight I'll prove that. My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you all are doing well. I just made it out here to Lone Wolf Mountain, and unfortunately, the road is inaccessible. Down at the bottom of this mountain, a very large tree has fallen over the road, and I see now that I'm up here, another tree has fallen too. This one, it's not blocking the road though. So luckily, I had my pack already packed up, ready to go, so all I had to do was put on my rain gear, grab the pack, and I hiked up here. Folks, this is going to be a wet adventure. Thank you very much for joining me. Let's go ahead, let's get the tarp set up. Let's get dry. It just stopped raining, everybody. Perfect. To be honest, I'm about ready to take this off because I'm hot. As you all can see here, I got the tarp set up. I did a quick and dirty setup with this. This is sort of in like an A-frame mixed with a shelf. What I wanted on this side was more protection. So this side is going down. It's gonna block some wind-driven rain. On this side here, this is raised up a little bit higher so I have more space to move around and also the airflow is better. Because we're in the middle of this trail, there's no trees to connect to as far as the center point goes. So I went ahead and I created center points. To do this, I tied a line from one tree across the trail to another tree. Then I tied the tarp to those lines. That is how I was able to set this up in the center of this trail. I tell you what folks, I have a tent that I need to set up before it begins to rain. So I'm gonna take some time, set that up, do it real quick, and hopefully I can get the tent set up before it starts raining. Wish me luck.
Yes. Everybody, I got that set up in the nick of time. It's beginning to rain again, but yet the tent is dry. I tell you everybody, I am so glad to have everything set up. The tent is set up, the tarp is set up, the tent is dry, I'm dry, you're dry, life is good. We definitely cut that one close, my friends. As it stands right now, it is raining.
Everybody, this coffee is fantastic. This is the caramel coffee that a viewer sent me. I love this stuff. I mean, the smell of this alone is incredible and it tastes amazing. To the viewer who sent this in, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This is the Bushnell one person backpacking tent. And there is something very interesting about this tent here. It was not actually made by Bushnell. This is a licensed product. This really is a long and complicated story and you'll have to watch the preview to understand it all. But to summarize, there is a company called I2D Licensed Products. What this company does is this. It approaches brands, it licenses their name, and then they slap that name onto other products. That's what this is. This is not a product that was designed by Bushnell or anything like that. I2D licensed products, license the name, and then put it on this tent. This camping adventure in truth is all about this tent here. Is it going to be waterproof? I don't know. All that I do know is that I'm out for an overnight trip here at Lone Wolf Mountain. I have the Bushnell tent as my only shelter minus this tarp. This is going to be a very interesting episode and I cannot wait to go check on that tent. As it stands right now, the rain's rather light, but it is coming down, it's rather steady. Later on tonight, the rain should be quite a bit heavier. So, we will see what happens. <laughs> As for an update, everyone, it is about 420. It continues to rain and the temperature is actually dropping some. It actually feels pretty good right now. The temp's gone down to roughly 54 degrees. That's pretty comfortable. 54 degrees, that feels pretty good. Later on tonight, the temp will get down to roughly 50. As far as the winter goes, everybody, so far it's been pretty good. For the last three weeks, I haven't been able to make it up here to Lone Wolf Mountain because of snowpack. We've had repeated snow events over and over and over. This road here is super steep. It's about half a mile long, and at the end, it's almost vertical. So if there's any snow, any ice, you cannot do it. On one side, there's a cliff, and that's the direction you're gonna go if you mess up. I think my plan to get some firewood and have a fire later on tonight, that's out of the question. Everything here is now soaking wet. It's literally dripping off of everything. Some people, when they go camping, they have to have a campfire. For myself, I'm not like that. I like having a fire, but if I don't have one, no big deal. Oftentimes I find that like, if I have a campfire, it takes my attention. So if I don't have a campfire, I focus on other things. I focus on things that are on my mind. My senses are like more acute, you know what I mean?
I went ahead, I fired up this lantern here, not only for some light because it is getting dark, but also for some heat. This little lantern from Soto puts off quite a bit of heat, folks. So like when you're sitting next to it, it's pretty nice. Again, it's really not that cold, but the winds have been picking up. A few minutes ago, they were actually quite gusty. You all know how it goes with the weather. Every five minutes, it changes. <laughs> That's certainly true today. I have a story to tell, a story to share with you all. I was going to wait until dinner to share this, but why not? I'll share it with you all now. Susie has a birthday coming up, and that's my wife, just in case you don't know. So for her birthday, I took her down, it was like an early birthday present, I took her down to Florida to see a country music star that she likes. Walker Hayes is his name. I have listened to like two of his songs, that's it. One I actually like pretty good, AA. He's known for something else too, something about Applebee's, and that song's okay to me. Anyways, there's a Walker Hayes concert down in Florida at Universal Studios. She loves Universal Studios, so it was like a win-win. I was gonna surprise her with a trip to Universal Studios and to that Walker Hayes concert for her birthday. So we go down there, we spend a day or two, we have an awesome time. It's the night of the concert, right? So the concert begins, we're super close. It was really impressive how close to the stage that we were. Anyways, so like, we're watching the concert, listening to it, and it's like standing room only. Something flickers in the corner of my eye and captures my attention. So I look over and there's this guy and he's kind of dressed a little bit weird. I'm not really sure what he had going on. It was like almost like a three piece suit, but not really, it's really odd. Anyways, and he also had like a strange hat on. Anyway, so I, I look over and he's playing on his phone and like I focus on what he's doing, what he's looking at. And it's like a half naked firefighter male <laughs> anyway the guy's on like tinder or something i don't know he's just flipping through like 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 just like this just like that anyway i look over at Susie and she looks at me and i'm like nudging her to look and like she looks down and there's like this naked guy on his phone and he's just like flip 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 it was hilarious <laughs> it was incredibly funny incredibly weird <laughs> As I mentioned, I've only listened to a couple of like Walker Hayes' songs, and the ones that I have heard did sound country. The one thing that surprised me about this concert was like how much it wasn't like country music. I'm not even sure what I would call it. You might be able to call it like hip hop with a little bit of country thrown in, even some rap and stuff. It was kind of unusual. It wasn't a bad concert or anything like that, but it certainly wasn't what I was expecting. Again, I've only heard those two songs, and they're pretty straightforward country tunes. It was a good concert nonetheless, I had a good time. Once the concert started, I was getting a couple of drinks and like the entire time the concert was going on, I was drinking. And by the time the concert was over, I didn't even have a buzz on. So we left the concert, left the park, and we stopped by this restaurant and they were making Mai Tais. And I told this guy, I was like, yeah, go ahead, make me a Mai Tai and make it strong. We went and got our drinks, we went and sat down, I drank that thing, and I just about had to crawl back to the hotel room. <laughs> we had a ton of fun. <laughs> that guy definitely knows how to make a drink, and I appreciated that. In the end, we really did have a great time for Susie's birthday. Happy birthday, Susie. Anyways, everybody, it is almost time for sundown. It's almost six o'clock now. As far as the rain goes, it really has been just hit and miss, super, super light just enough to kind of like make a water puddle on the ground, enough to kind of drip off the tarp, and that's about it. I think it's going to be a colder night than the forecast said. Already, it's below 50. With all the moisture in the air, it's a little bit chilly. You can actually tell there's a shift taking place as far as the temperature goes. It's becoming really foggy at the moment. Silent Hill style, you know what I mean?
folks. This is amazing. Really, really good. And the heat that this little lantern is putting off is also good. This is like being next to like a small heater or a small fire. Earlier, we talked about the Bushnell tent that I have set up here. What I'm doing in this episode, I do not recommend that you do. First off, you need to purchase high quality gear. Second, you should always waterproof test your tent before you take it out on an adventure. I know that sounds like a ton of work, but it's important to know whether or not your tent can withstand some rain. It's important to know whether or not it's defective. Taking a tent out without testing it, that is a serious gamble. What I'm doing is gear testing. There is a difference. I personally would never take a tent out into the wild that I have not tested, especially with a tent that features a waterproof rating as low as that thing, 600 millimeters. That is good for like the lightest rain ever, basically what we received today. To put this into perspective, a tent with a 600 millimeter hydrostatic head rating, that is basically a sun tent. That is something that you would take to the beach and when it started raining, you would pack up and go home. Here's another example. Let's say that you were to buy a tent for your kids to play in, in the yard. It would feature a 600 millimeter hydrostatic head rating. With all that I said in mind, let's play out a scenario. Let's say that you purchase a tent, questionable name brand, you didn't waterproof test it, you go out on a trip, and that night rain comes in. You discover that the tent is leaking. What are you going to do? Are you going to try to make do inside of the tent? Or are you going to bail and try to go home? If you set up a tarp, are you going to stay underneath the tarp all night long? You have options, none of them are very good. So the question is, what are you going to do? For this episode here, if this tent leaks, my plan is to stay underneath this tarp all night long. I will sit in this chair and just wait out the night. I know what you're thinking. Luke, you could put down a pad, you could sleep on the ground, and that is true. The unfortunate thing is this, everybody. This is Lone Wolf Mountain. This mountain is covered in ticks. Yes, I spray my gear, my clothing with permethrin, but yet there's so many ticks here. I would not lay down on the ground here for nothing. Absolutely nothing. You can do everything by the books every single time, and that does not mean that you're not going to have any ticks on you. You're doing your best to be proactive, but it's going to happen. So you really do have to take care. You have to be smart. For myself, I'm not going to lay down on this ground, even with permethrin protection. I have pulled enough ticks out of my skin from this mountain. I know better. I'm just not going to do it. So I'd rather just sit right here all night long if I have to. I may not have to, but if I have to, I will. Now I know what you're thinking. Luke, on top of the hill, we have the cabin. Unfortunately, I do not have the key to the cabin. It's not that the key is in my truck at the bottom of the mountain. It's not in my truck at all. Unfortunately, I took it out, put it on a different keychain. I was mixing things up and I uh, completely forgot it. So. After a full day of light rain, I mean super, super light rain, it is actually raining out there. I would call this a light to moderate rainfall. It's still foggy, temperature's definitely dropping. The watch says it is 48 degrees. As far as the time goes, it's about 10.30. I've been sitting underneath the tarp here just listening to the drizzle, and all of a sudden it just picked up. I tell you folks, being next to this little lantern, it's putting off a ton of heat. It's really comfortable. I have to admit though, I feel like I've messed up. I haven't checked the radar to see if this is going to slack off anytime soon or not. 
but I have that feeling I should have gotten inside of the tent before now. Like I've waited too long. The thing is about this tent, when you open up the door and you pull back the fly, the inside of the tent will get soaking wet. It's one of those tents where it really does need to be dry out for you to get in and out of it. So, I don't know. I might be stuck underneath this tarp for a little while. <laughs> I messed up. <laughs> That's what happened. It is now a little bit after 11 o'clock. I continue to sit and stand underneath this tarp. The rain is coming down good enough that pretty much it makes it impossible to get inside of that tent right now. I mean, I could open up the door, climb inside, try to take off my rain jacket. That alone would soak everything too, and then try to clean everything up. I don't know if that really makes any sense. My plan is just to sit this out and hopefully it's going to stop raining in a little bit. As you all can hear, it is absolutely pouring out there. Finally, we have a good test for this tent. Unfortunately, we are stuck underneath this tarp. I went ahead, I got out my Swagman roll, put it over the top of me. Think of this as like a modern poncho liner. I'm using this to block some of the cold and some of the moisture, because the thing is this, everybody. I just checked the radar, and it's nothing but rain coming in. There's no breaks, and because of that, there really is no way for me to get inside of that tent. With it raining, there's no way to get in and out of it without the inside getting soaked. And since I'm doing a waterproofing test with this tent, I can't just go over there, open it up, soak the inside, and have a reliable result. I'm not complaining, of course. This goes hand in hand with having an outdoor gear review channel. I'm someone who could sleep just about anywhere, and I guess tonight I'll prove that. I can tell I'm about to fall asleep. Everybody, I'm gonna say goodnight for now. I better turn this off so I don't waste the gas. Folks, I'll see you all in the morning, unless something interesting happens and I'll bring you back. Everybody, good night. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. 
It is 10 minutes until sunrise. I've been in this chair all night. When I turned the camera off last night, it was around 12.30. I have to be honest, sleeping in this chair, in the rain, wasn't half bad. <laughs> Not bad at all, actually. In fact, to me, the night has flown by. I don't have a specific number in regards to how many times I have stayed, it basically camped in a chair before, but it's gotta be, I don't know, six or seven times over the years I've had to. Honestly, it wasn't bad. There's something comfortable about slouching down, covering up, putting your head on your chest, just like this, listening to the rain, and dozing off. It's not bad. As far as the weather goes, it rained all night long just like this. Not terribly hard, but not light either. Without a doubt, this is the only dry spot in this entire forest. <laughs> it is so wet out there, so muddy. Like when I got here, everything worked out perfectly, right? I was able to set up the tarp, get the tent set up, the timing was perfect. And then come to last night, the timing was just so off. Everything was off. And I had to stay underneath this tarp last night. <laughs> Good morning. The morning doesn't officially start until you have some good, strong coffee. It is such a mess out there, everybody. Wet, yes, but so muddy. The ground is so soft. With that being said though, I slept so good last night in that chair, it's ridiculous. I'll probably pay for it later. I'll probably be like super sore or something like that, but like right now, I feel great. It's a good morning. And at the same time, it's a good story. I had to sleep in a chair last night. <laughs> Speaking of last night, it was quiet. Never heard anything, nothing moving, nothing. The rain should be moving out of here fairly soon. As soon as it slacks up, I'm going to open up that tent to see whether or not it has leaked. What do you all think? Put your predictions down below.
everybody, it is time to check on the tent. It's still raining, but it's super light. Let's open it up and let's see whether or not this tent has leaked. This tent has leaked. As you can see here, we have a pretty good sized puddle. Additionally, we had leaking from this corner, it appears. And that looks to be it. That's a pretty good amount of water though. It's not the worst, but yet, it's pretty bad. This, my friends, is the reason why you waterproof test your gear before you go out on a trip. You need to know the issues that you're going to face. With this tent here, it really does have a funky design. You might not be able to tell it in this episode, make sure to check out my preview, but the front of this tent comes to a point. This side is longer, this side's narrower. It's just, it's weird. It has a flashlight pocket. Getting in and out of this tent in the rain is virtually impossible. And again, it leaks. My friends, it is time to wrap up this adventure and to say goodbye. I'm pretty much done with coffee. The rain is over. Our testing is done. I slept in a chair last night. I'm done. With this rain event, the thing is this. It was steady, but it was light most of the time. Only a few times did it actually hit a moderate range. And yet, that tent has leaked that much. Imagine what it would be like if you're out in the summertime with this tent. A storm comes through at nighttime. I mean, that tent could be a swimming pool. I mean, who knows? It would be my advice to at least stay away from this tent. And you may want to consider staying away from all the Bushnell tents. You may want to check and see what the hydrostatic head ratings are on Amazon. The lowest hydrostatic head rating that you should consider for a three season tent is around 1200. Everyone, I'm going to pack up. Take care. Be well. Thank you so much for joining me for this trip. I really do appreciate it. If you had a good time, hit the thumbs up. It helps the channel a lot. Folks, be well. Take care. Strength and honor. Bye for now. Thank you.